Well, I recently took delivery on a new Pashley Governor bike. I thought we'd take a quick trip around the bike and show some of the features off. It's an overview of it. You can see the frame is built in an old 1930s era style. Very slack angles, uh, long wheelbase. The head tube and seat tube are about the same angle. I think they're both 68. Uh, long forks with a lot of rake. That front wheel really sits out in front of you when you ride it. Uh, it's about seems like about a half a wheel ahead of a normal bike. Frame is made out of Reynolds 531. You can see the tubing decal on there. Tubing was, uh, according to Pashley, specially drawn for them by Reynolds in Birmingham. Uh, they don't really make it anymore, but they want it to be correct to the period and use the tubing again. Some other interesting things about the frame, uh, the seat stays bolt on at the top and the bottom. You can see the attachments there. Uh, it's, it's quite secure and I have not heard any kind of creaking or any other movement coming out of the back end in several of these are riding it so far. The stays in the back are built in what they call a bottle top design. You can see how the top of the stays kind of look like a bottle there. The uh, chain stays are basically the same. Now interestingly the chain stays are brazed onto the frame while the seat stays aren't. That's how they used to do it. I don't know why. Now walking around the front you can see the fork has a, a old uh, tubular fork crown which is basically just a piece of frame tubing onto which the fork legs are brazed. You can see the Pashley crest on the front there established in 1926. Handlebars up here are in the North Road style. Uh, I suppose you could take these and turn them around, flip them up to get a more upright position. This is uh, the kind of racier look, which, which I like, so I've left it that way. Comes with a bell. A nice little brass bell on here. Thanks for telling other people that you're coming. Interestingly, uh, it's a little covered up here. Chinelli stem, an old uh, Chinelli 1A stem on there. Uh, to hold the bars. I put this bottle cage on the bars here. The, the holder, by the way, that the adapter that puts it on the bars is from Velo Orange. That's velo-orange.com. You can order them from them. Take a look at the wheels. These are 28 inch wheels. Uh, quite large, 28 by one and a half inch tires. Front and back have Sturmy Archer drum brakes which are operated by cables. The front brake has an arm that attaches to the left uh, fork and the rear has a similar arm that attaches to the left hand chain stay. That's like an old coaster brake attachment and that's what helps the brakes work. I like the brakes because they really keep the frame looking clean. There's no brakes up at the fork crown or up on the chainstay bridge. There's no cantilevers to hang out there. It's a very clean look and makes it look much more like a, an old fixed gear bike. Uh, the brakes actually work quite well. Not perhaps as well as a disc brake or, or some dual pivot uh, side pulls would, but uh, quite well. They're also, I would suppose, very sealed from, uh, from the elements. So if, you're, if you are caught out in the rain on this bike, the brakes would probably work pretty well. Don't know what kind of st uh, seat post that is. It's uh, top of the Brooks saddle, B17. The bike comes with a titanium railed version of the Brooks. I had them take that off and uh, just put a regular B17 on it. Saved me uh, quite amount of quite a bit of money because the titanium version is quite uh, much more expensive. I didn't really see the point in having a titanium seat on a bike which is otherwise fairly heavy, probably in the mid 20s in terms of uh, weight. Nice polished SR crank set on here. I took off the rat trap pedals that it comes with, put these egg beaters on to ride with my touring shoes. Also had them change the gearing. It came stock with a 42, uh, 18 I believe it was. We switched it out to a 40, 44 chain ring to get slightly taller gears. I've also on the back here, if you can see, put a White Industries Dos Eno freewheel with a 16-18 cog combination. That lets me get off the bike, uh, undo the wheel bolts, move the chain with my finger, and uh, change gears fairly quickly. Probably run it just in the same speed most of the time. One other thing to mention over here on the left-hand side of the bike, noted that there's a, an attachment onto the frame from the brakes. 
here you can see I've taken the uh, nutted bolt that came with and put this thumb tightening uh, thumb screw on here to make it easier to change the rear wheel when I'm out on the road. I don't have to carry a separate wrench just for that one fitting. You do have to carry a 15 centimeter or 15 millimeter wrench for the bolts that hold the wheels on. You see the slotted dropouts here that the rear wheel fits into and again the, the bolted attachment where the seat stays uh, come down and attach here at the dropouts. So that's an overview of the bike. It rides quite nicely. It's not quick. It won't accelerate very quickly uh, just because of all the weight in the wheels. But once you get it up to speed, it does go, uh, moves quite smartly. Uh, it'll keep up with other bikes, definitely. And it, it just cruises the long wheelbase, the uh, steel frame, those big wheels, really helping to absorb a lot of the, the road noise and, and make for quite a comfortable ride.